Well, ladies and, and gentlemen, our next speaker is someone who needs no introduction. But right now, as we look at what a successful November conservatives had all across the country, we were successful because we stood up and showed the voters of this nation and the voters of Iowa that there's a clear difference between a conservative governing philosophy and a liberal majority that believes they can control every aspect of your lives. And there's no one that embodies that spirit, that principle, and that leadership more than our congressman, Congressman Steve King. You're a great crowd today. You're a big crowd today. There's still cars coming in the parking lot. It looks out there about like Iowa State, Iowa here instead of the straw poll. You're sending a message to America. That message to America is that we have the first chance to be able to give a boost to some candidates and give a recommendation to the rest of the country. This matters, this first in the nation straw poll that we have. It matters for a lot of reasons. But the straw poll is tied to the caucus. If the straw poll is effective, and it is, and you're making it effective today, that means the caucus will also be effective. If we ever lost first in the nation caucus, then it would be down to every man or every woman wouldn't have an opportunity to be president of the United States again. It would fall to the person with the deepest pockets, the candidate that could paint a media image, and we'd never again be looking presidential candidates in the eye and shaking their hand and taking the measure of their character and their authenticity. This is important. When I was a young boy, I remember asking my father, Dad, could you be president? And he thought a little bit and he looked at me and he said, I suppose if I wanted to be. I want that always to be the case. For every little boy and every little girl in America, I want them to always grow up believing that their mom and their dad could be president if they wanted to be and if America chose them. And I want every little child to know that the hope and dream of America is in our being able to all of us aspire to any position in this country, whether it's public office or some other form of service. This straw poll today is embodies that dream for every American. Thank you for all you're doing to make it count today. Now we have some things we need to do. There's some things we need to do from a policy standpoint. And uh, a lot of you know what I think, but I just want to go down through the list of this and touch a few things. One is, we're looking today at a national debt that is $14.3 trillion. If we do nothing, in 10 years, it's $28 trillion. If the proposal that passed two or three weeks ago is successful, in 10 years it's only $26 trillion. How do you feel? Not very good. And if we stick with the Ryan budget, it's $23 trillion in debt in 10 years, and it would be another 16 years before the budget balances. We cannot back away from our responsibility to tighten our ballots and pass a balanced budget amendment to the United States Constitution. And while we're doing that, we need to put some other pieces in place. One is we've got to get this economy on the move again. Now, I will tell you that the markets are closed today, and they'll be closed tomorrow. But I can tell you how we can get those markets to jump up a 1,000 points at the opening bell on Monday. Now I know I have your attention. Here's how this works. The President of the United States needs to set up his podium out there on the south lawn of the White House and I would type it into the teleprompter for him. <laughs> I want the president to step out at that podium and I want him to say, you know, I've been meditating and I've been seeking counsel and I've been praying and I've come to a conviction. John Maynard Keynes was wrong. <laughs> Keynesian economics is wrong. That you cannot borrow money from the Chinese and give it to people that aren't working and ask them to spend it in this economy and create a giant chain letter and think you're going to stimulate the economy. You cannot. <laughs> Thank you. 
I want President Obama to say that John Maynard Keynes was wrong, Milton Friedman was right, Adam Smith was right. I want him to say, now that I've come to this conviction, I'm here to tell you I'm a one I'm a one term president. Now you know how the markets will jump up a thousand points on Monday and if he does that. They'll jump up more than that if he would say, I'm going to embrace and endorse the Republican nominee because that's the free market, freedom, and liberty party. More than 30 years ago, Ronald Reagan asked this question of America. And it was this, are you better off today than you, are, than you were four years ago? And the answer, of course, was no. We sent Jimmy Carter home, and we elected the greatest president of the, of the 20th century, Ronald Reagan. And today the question is, yes, about whether you're better off, but there's a more important question. There's something more precious to us, and that's our freedom and our liberty. And I will ask you, do you have more freedom today than you had when Obama was inaugurated? Do you have more liberty today? No. Do we have more prosperity today? No. Do we have more jobs today? No. Do we have more hope today? No. And what did Obama do with the change? He spent that and every dime he could get his hands on because he's a Keynesian economist on steroids. That's what he is. Now, he also makes Hugo Chavez look like a piker when it comes to nationalizing American business. Three large investment banks, AIG, taken over by the federal government, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, General Motors, Chrysler, the student loan program, all of that nationalized. The federal takeover of private sector businesses managed by the White House. And now what else did he have the audacity to do? He likes that word audacity. The single most sovereign thing we have is our soul. And we protect it with everything we have and we nurture our children to have the same core faith so that they protect their sovereign soul as well. But the second most sovereign thing we have is our health. Our bodies, our health, the management of it has been nationalized by President Obama in Obamacare. He nationalized your skin and everything inside it. And he put a 10% tax on the outside if you go to the tanning salon. <laughs> Obamacare has got to be ripped out by the roots. Obamacare is a malignant tumor in our culture, in our society, and our civilization. It's got to be ripped out of the roots so there's no vestige of it left behind. Not one particle of DNA of Obamacare left behind because if we leave it, it will grow, it will regenerate, it will metastasize as this tumor is now and it feeds on your freedom and liberty. Obamacare has got to go. <laughs> And I want that repeal, the repeal of Obamacare, to be plank number one in every presidential campaign so that the next president of the United States, when he stands on the podium in the west portico of the Capitol building of the United States, January 20th, 2013, I want that next president, he or she, to, have, to swear into office with hand on Bible, pen in hand, and swear, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, so help me God. And before the next President shakes hands with Chief Justice Roberts, I want him to sign the repeal of Obamacare right there at the inauguration ceremony, January 20th, 2013. Thank you very much. God bless you all.